been 170 days since wildfires ripped through the community of Lahaina, Hawaii. Do you need a reminder? Is it a coincidence that the Maui police chief is the same man who was in charge in Las Vegas during that massacre that killed 58 people? Is it a coincidence that the Maui property, owned by million and billionaires, wasn't touched by the flames while homes of the locals all burned? Coincidence that the largest system of outdoor emergency sirens in the world never made a sound as the fire devoured Lahaina? Was it a coincidence that at the same time, very same time, all the water was turned off? Was it a coincidence that police were ordered to block off streets and to funnel all the cars trying to escape? Think about this coincidence. That governor also signed an emergency proclamation on July 17th, three weeks before the fire, about housing of all things. Is it a coincidence that the government put up a black fence around Lahaina or that the FAA routed all drones from flying over the affected areas? Is it a coincidence that since at least 2011, there have been plans to make Maui the first smart city run by 100% renewable energy? And that it must be a coincidence then that the locals whose homes did not burn are now being evicted from their property. And so how are things now? Independent journalist Nick Sorter is back on the ground in Lahaina, Hawaii, and he is talking with residents and getting information on how the rebuild is going. Remember, Nick was one of the first citizen journalists to be on the ground after the wildfires had happened and was actually bringing us the facts of what was going on, which is something that the mainstream media was trying to keep from everybody. And so far, he's learned that residents are still being prevented from visiting their properties. The town is still fortified. Toxic waste is being placed on the hillside directly above the town, and most are receiving practically zero aid, despite the celebrities coming out and promising them millions of dollars. Uh, so the update on the People's Fund of Maui is proud to tell you this, that at the end of January, we would have delivered over $60 million to over 8,000 survivors. But a lot of citizens didn't get that because they had to prove that they had a home in Lahaina and a lot of that documentation was lost in the fire. A lot of those homes were owned outright and were generational homes, and so everything that they had was kept within the home. So they were denied. Jeff Bezos had also promised a large sum of money to the citizens of Lahaina and said that he had donated it, but each and every resident said that they haven't seen a dime. Actually, nobody knows where those actual donations went. Insurance companies are dragging their feet on payouts, and so people aren't able to get their building permits in order to start rebuilding. I get asked all the time on TikTok, how's the rebuilding going in Lahaina? Well, see for yourself. What is it, five months after the fire? Nothing's been done. Hawaiian Democrats have introduced legislation in order to keep President Trump off the ballot in the 2024 election in accordance to Hawaii. Meanwhile, Lahaina residents are writing to President Trump for his help, saying that they know he has intel on what happened there at Hawaii, and they understand that they have been attacked and that it was not a natural disaster. On its face, it is obvious that the United States government has failed the people of Lahaina and is more focused on prosecuting its political opponents and their supporters. A conspiratorial note, it looks like a land grab by the rich and the elite so that they can usher in their very first... 15 minute city. What about the kids? Amber, there was 49 kids reg uh, that weren't registered to go back to school. By October, a month later, I don't know how it happened that the news reports started coming out that there was 500 kids that haven't reported back to school. Now, on our end here, everyone says, oh, if, you, if you're reading the reports, it's saying more than 100 dead. For some reason, they don't want to get that 100 count up higher than what it really is. In Lahaina, here on the west side, you, we can guarantee you that's going to be 500 to 700 dead. Now, 500 kids haven't showed up. Where are they? They haven't contacted their parents. They haven't done it. Nobody knows where these kids are. On a darker conspiratorial note, it could look like a large child trafficking operation hidden within a land grab and then hidden within government corruption. Where are all these missing kids? Why haven't the parents talked to the media about their children that are missing? Why hasn't the media talked to any of these parents? Have any of them been found? Are they confirmed deceased? Not me that's asking. It's a lot of people are asking what happened to these kids and what happened to their families. Could be equated to the child kidnapping epidemic that we had had throughout the 70s and 80s, except this one was done all in one shot. Why are we asking the rich and the powerful to house migrant families from other countries when its own citizens are sitting out here homeless? And why is the United States government more concerned with the children of Ukraine or the children of Israel than it is with its own? Why haven't the social justice warriors taken to the streets in order to demand justice for the people of Lahaina rather take to the streets and demand justice for the people of Palestine. This is their home. This is your home. You would think that it would take precedence, but it doesn't.